Hi everyone, it's Mrs. Cronin with the School Counseling Department. And thank you again for having us in your freshman seminar. Today we're gonna to talk about a lighter topic um, than we did last time. And we are gonna talk about four year planning and the importance of starting now and thinking of your future. You just were in your freshman block um, doing our quiz. So we are, the plan for today is now to review the answers to the questions that you were researching and just give you some more insight into the four year planning process. At the end, Mrs. Schofner, our college and career counselor is also gonna to talk to you quickly about the importance of academic planning. Before we start though, I just like to let everyone know, and I'm sure you've heard it before, is that um, high school goes by very fast. Everyone will tell you the your four years of high school will fly by, and right now it may not feel this way, but trust me when I say, by the time you are a senior, you're gonna say, you were right, Mrs. Cronin, that went by fast. And so what we want to happen is for you to start thinking ahead and planning your future so that you're giving yourself every opportunity to do what you wanna do when you graduate from high school. So today, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna to start to go over some important information about the four-year planning process and what you should know about credits and um, graduation here at Winnicott High School, because in January, which is gonna come real fast, you're gonna already pick your classes for next year. So we wanna start that conversation now. Um, so here we go. Um, we will start by going over the answers to the quiz and see how successful you were in figuring these out. What is the minimum number of credits required to graduate from Winnicott High School? And the answer is 110. So you need 110 credits minimum to get your Winnicott High School diploma. Credits are something that high schools use to track graduation requirements. Um, and every high school does it a little bit differently. So for instance, if you have friends in Portsmouth or Exeter, they may tell you they only need 40 credits to graduate with their diploma. And that's because their credits may differ than ours in that they may use a half a credit or a full credit for their uh, semester classes or their quarter classes. And we use two credits and four credits um, for ours. So colleges do not look at credits. That is just something that high schools use to track their graduation requirements. Um, so if you get you know, 120 credits or 110 credits, Colleges, um, that is not going to mat matter for colleges. It's just for the Winnicott kind of Diploma, and you need 110 minimum to um, get that diploma. What happens if you fail a required class? If you fail a required class, you have to retake it. So I always say to my students, why in the world would you want to take a class that you obviously don't like because you failed it again for a second time. Um, it is not like middle school. In high school, you have to repeat required classes if you do not pass them. We do not pass you on to the next year without meeting those required class um, requirements. So, you know, you think of it this way, you can't be 16 years old driving yourself to eighth grade, right? In middle school, they always kind of push you along, push you along, even if you fail classes. But in high school, that's not the case. We welcome 16 year old freshmen, if that's what you choose to be. Um, I don't recommend that by any means, um, but you have to pass your required classes in order to continue on um, and get your diploma um, and be promoted to the next grade. Even. What is an NC grade? An NC stands for no credit. Um, and we give those when you have not met the course competencies. So for instance, if you're passing your global perspectives class, okay, so let's say you have a 75. However, let's say you've been anxious and you were not able to present. And uh, the speaking competency is one of the competencies for the course, okay? So what would happen is they would award you an NC at the end of the trimester, which stands for no credit. You would then have to go to our NC class, which meets the next trimester after school, 
to do and make up those competencies that you were not able to do during the trimester. So for instance, in the example I gave you with global perspectives, you would have to go after school and you would have to do your presentation to the teacher that's there. Um, and once you do that, your grade is then released. So in that example, you had a 75. So that 75, uh, once you meet all the competencies for the course would then go on your transcript. You wouldn't have to go to the NC class any longer. What does an incomplete mean? Generally, an incomplete is given to a student who has experienced something that has happened right before the end of the trimester. So an incomplete gives you three weeks from the end of the trimester to complete any of the essential work that you missed. For example, you have your wisdom teeth out right before Thanksgiving break or your something unexpected happens. There's a death in your family, you experience an accident, you break an arm and you can't write. Things that are unexpected that can impact the continuity of your education and make it impossible for you to finish up the tasks that you need to complete your work. And since you are freshmen, how many credits do you need to be promoted to be a sophomore? And the answer is 24. Now, most students can earn anywhere from 30 to 36 credits a year. So getting to 24 should be very doable for everyone. And the one class you need to make sure that you pass to be considered a sophomore is your freshman English class. The freshman English class, even if you have your 24 credits and for some reason you don't pass freshman English or English 9, we've called it different things, you will not be considered a sophomore. Okay, this question is how many credits and cl what class do you need to be promoted to be a junior at Winnet County? The answer is you need 48 credits. Um, earn credits and also you have to pass American literature to be a junior. The next question, how many credits and what class do you need to be promoted to be a senior? The answer, you need 74 credits um, and also you need to pass world literature. Which math class or its equivalent must be passed in order to graduate? The state requirement uh, for all students is Algebra 1. Every student at Winnicott kind of must pass Algebra 1. Math 1, 2, and 3 equals Algebra 1. What are GPA and class rank and why are they important? So your GPA stands for your grade point average, and you've probably heard of this before, um, but here at Winnicott at High School, we actually have two GPAs that we give you. Um, one GPA is on a scale of 4.0, and that probably sounds familiar to you, um, 4.0, like a perfect GPA. And that B GPA consists of all your grades and all the classes you take. So it's an average of your English class, your math class, your art class, your PE class. It takes every class that you've taken, all those grades, averages it out and puts it on a scale of 4.0. Your other GPA is called your weighted GPA and that falls on a scale of 8.3. And that only averages out the classes that have um, like a weight to them or a level to them. So it's usually your English, your math, your science, your social studies, and your world language. And with that GPA, if you take it at a higher level, you get more points. So you get more points if you take it at an AP or honors level versus a CP level versus an essential skills level. Um, and that's kind of unique to our school, our, our system to create that weighted GPA. Uh, when you go to apply to a college, they'll have their own kind of system where they take certain classes and put it on their own uh, GPA system. But um, those are their two GPAs that we have here at Winnicott High School. And if you request your transcript, you're gonna find both of them located on your transcript. Uh, the next question was about class rank. 
And class rank is where you fall in comparison to your classmates. So they're gonna look at your uh, GPAs and see, do you fall fifth in the class? Do you fall 100th in the class? Um, you've probably heard of a valedictorian. That would be the person who ranks number one in the class. So the rank is in comparison to your classmates. Uh, and that will also be found on your transcript. Um, so as you get older and you're applying to things, when you ask for your transcript, you're gonna find that you can locate your weighted GPA, your unweighted GPA or your simple GPA, that's on the 4.0 scale and your class rank. Um, so as you can see on the PowerPoint, class rank is also used for National Honor Society, colleges, as we said, um, your top, you know, who's in the top 10 when you graduate. Um, and it's the focus is really on your senior year because that's when the, the class rank is finalized. What counts as phys ed and how many credits do you need to graduate? So we're actually very fortunate in that we have all these different options um, to meet your PE or your phys ed physical education requirement. Um, all students freshman year will take fitness, sports and games or ROTC. And then after that, it, open up, it opens up the door for you to take some of these other options such as fitness dance, project adventure, team sports, net sports, weight training, fitness for a lifetime. Um, and so you have to take three of those courses um, so it's two, four, six credits total. So three PE classes are required for graduation. Now, if you do the ROTC route, uh, ROTC one counts as one PE, and then you have to take two and three to count as another PE, and then three, four, and five, or five and six to, to meet your last credit. So it's kind of like every other for ROTC, and that's because uh, the physical activity isn't every day of the week it's usually like a couple times a week. So we're trying to even, even out the playing field with making sure you're, you're getting active. What is the prerequisite to take jewelry one? So a prerequisite means what do I have to take in order to take jewelry one? Um, and specifically for this class, there is no prerequisite. You don't have to take any certain class before you can take Jewelry One. The only uh, limitation to it is you have to be a junior or senior to take Jewelry One. And if you use the program of studies and you look under the art section and you find jewelry and you look at the course description, at the end of the course description, it will list any prerequisites. So it'll likely just say open to juniors and seniors. The next question is what classes can fulfill the fine arts requirement? And the answer is any course from art, theater, or music that is two credits. So you require two credits for the fine arts. Name three classes that fulfill the computer technology requirement. If you look on pages four and five of your program of study, studies, you'll see multiple classes that will fulfill this requirement, including architecture, design, create, create, innovate, and digital electronics, robotics. So there are lots of options to fulfill the computer technology requirement. Do you get credit, credit for a study? That's a trick question because the answer to that question is yes and no. If it's a regular study, you do not get credit, but if it's Title I and Learning Lab, you do get one credit. Athletic eligibility. What is required to be eligible to play sports? You have to pass five classes that meet every day. For instance, band with alternating study hall does not count in the trimester preceding the sports season. So if I wanna play basketball, this trimester, I have to have five passing grades in order to be eligible to play basketball. If one of those classes is banned, okay, that does not count because band alternates with a study and meets every other day. So then if I have band in my schedule, I have to make sure that I pass all six of my classes to be eligible to play basketball. Now, if I wanna play football next year, 
you may wonder, well, which grades do they look at? Well, they look at the year before, okay? So if you're, obviously you guys are freshmen. So if you wanna play football in the sophomore year, they're gonna be looking at your trimester three grades to determine if you're eligible for football in the fall of your sophomore year. ELO, what are ELOs? What is distance learning? ELOs are extended learning opportunities. Extended learning opportunities are something that we have here at Winnicunit um, through our ELO office. Um, Mrs. Couture and Ms. Smith run that office. And there are all kinds of things that you can do uh, from being a service aide to doing a career exploration to doing internships. So there are many different ELO or extended learning opportunities that you can do and fit in your schedule um, if you so choose. And what you would do to do that is you would make a, an appointment with them and sit down and talk about what you're interested in. And then um, we would meet your guidance counselor, the student and Ms. Couture um, about how that would make sense to be able to fit whatever it is that you'd like to do into your schedule, whether that be an internship or um, Sometimes, you know, if you really like a course and you wanted to explore a little beyond that course, but we don't offer that type of course as a class, um, you could do that under the ELO, the Extended Learning Opportunity, and get credits for that. Um, VLAX is an online high school um, that's out of Exeter. It's free for New Hampshire residents. Um, and essentially, it's, it's um, something that our students, or really any student, could take um, as an extra, an extra class. Um, so that's something that we do accept their credit. If you're ever interested in taking a VLAX class, uh, you certainly can talk to your guidance counselor about what would make sense uh, for you if that's something you're interested in. And then Running Start is uh, credits that we uh, work with colleges to um, allow students to take a class here while they're in high school and get college credit for doing that, as well as high school credit. Um, and so there are a few classes in the junior and senior year um, that do offer that running start credit um, so that you're able to get both high school and college credit. Um, and that's something that, that you could talk to your guidance counselor about um, which classes that we offer and what might be appropriate for you. What is a New Hampshire scholar? New Hampshire Scholars is part of the State Scholars Initiative, a national program that motivates students to compete in a rigorous course of study in high school. Benefits include recognition as a senior scholar at graduation and a designation as a state scholar on their diploma. They also get a medallion to wear with their um, cap and gown and kids really, really, really like that. So the New Hampshire scholar requirements that are in addition to the Winnicott at High School requirements are four years of English, three years of math, including Algebra 1, Geometry, and Algebra 2, Biology, Chemistry, and Physics, Global Perspectives 1 and 2, U.S. History 1, 2, and 3, two U.S. History Concentration classes, an Economics class, and a Foundations of Democracy and two years of world language. Now, most of this is included in what you need to earn a Winnicott High School diploma anyway. The only things that are extra are the two years of world language and the social studies elective and maybe the mixture of science and math courses. Now, while world language is not a requirement to graduate from Winnicott High School, two years of a foreign language is a requirement for almost every four year college to be considered in an application. This is a list of required classes for all students at Winnicott High School in order to be eligible to graduate. Um, this is your English classes, starting with English one, or we call it freshman English. Uh, your sophomore year is American literature, junior year is world literature, and your senior year could be senior English or AP literature or college composition. Next. Uh, your social studies requirements, global one and two in your freshman year, uh, history one and two in your sophomore year, 
history three and a concentration. A concentration could, could be taken any year actually. And then in your senior year, you would take economics and foundations of democracy. Math requirements include uh, three successive years of math. So some students will take math one, two, and three. Uh, most students will take algebra one their first year at Winnicott and then move on to geometry and then algebra two and then a fourth year of math and we have a wide array of math classes for that fourth year. In science, uh, most students will take physical science as a freshman. Um, the second year would be biology, third year chemistry or uh, other electives that we offer, including uh, marine biology, New Hampshire birds, ecology, oceanography, physics, anatomy, and so forth. There's a lot of science options for students at Winnicott. Uh, your health requirements are two classes. Uh, wellness in your sophomore year, that's a two credit class, and then lifetime wellness in your senior year, also a two credit class. World language is not a requirement to graduate at Winnicott. However, we encourage students to take it if you're thinking about going, attending a four-year college. Uh, many four-year colleges require two years minimum of a world language and three if you're if for some schools. So um, again, it's not a requirement, but you are encouraged to take it. If, and if you're doing well, move on to the third and fourth year. Okay, you've probably heard of SST and that stands for the SECO School of Technology. Um, and it is our career to technical school that is located in Exeter, New Hampshire. Um, so if you are interested, um, what's gonna happen is there's gonna be an assembly in January and we're gonna kind of introduce you to the different programs um, so that you're a little bit more familiar with um, the SECO School of Technology. And then you're gonna actually visit the site in February and you're gonna be able to pick usually two programs to go visit. Um, and if we go to the next slide, um, you can see all the various programs that they offer, animal plant science, and you're actually interacting with live animals and plants, automotive, you're actually working on cars, biotechnology uh, in the health field, building construction, computer programming, culinary arts, where you're actually helping to run a restaurant um, and you're you know, back there in the, in the kitchen, things like that. Digital communications, early childhood, they're help, you help run a little daycare, health sciences, um, really good for nursing, um, marketing and welding. So some really cool hands-on programs. It does take up a chunk of your schedule. So normally if you do attend SST, it takes up your elective space. So the classes that you'll take here at Winnicott are your core classes, like your English and your math. Um, so we'll talk more about that if you're interested, um, but that will be coming up for you to learn more about in the, in the near future. And just a little bit more about course selection at WHS. And when we talk about course selection, we're talking about picking your classes for next year. So the process usually begins in January where your teachers are recommending um, the classes that you're gonna take for next year. So for instance, in your English class this year, you don't have a level. So your English teacher is gonna recommend you to take either honors, honors English next year, college prep English or essential skills. Um, so you guys will learn how to use um, your portal to go in and see the classes that you were recommended for and also pick some uh, electives that you're interested in taking. Um, so you're gonna learn about this through your advisory. Um, in the past, you know, we've brought you guys into the auditorium and explained the process depending on how this year goes. We'll either do a virtual process um, online or hopefully we'll have you back uh, so that we can show you in person. Um, so it'll open up, you'll select your classes. We can certainly assist with this as needed. The portal will close in February. You'll make an appointment with me so that we can review it together. So sometimes we'll go over it. We'll talk more about it. You might want to make a change. Um, you might say, oh, my teacher recommended me for college prep, but I really want to take honors. How can I do that? That would be the time for us, um, you and I to meet, for us to talk about things. And I can make the changes if we need to. Um, so course selection ends in March because that's when we take all of your course courses that you're requesting and build the schedule 
and the computer takes all your requests and tries to schedule all of the classes that you want. Um, sometimes there are conflicts and in June, when you get your schedule, if you notice something's missing or something didn't schedule, again, you and I can meet and we can try to fill in the blanks, um, take a look to see why there was a conflict, um, but obviously we'll need to prioritize the classes you need for graduation. So that's just a little rundown on course selection for next year. Hello, I'm Melinda Schaffner. I'm the college and career counselor. And normally I come into classrooms and do some um, talk about four-year planning over the next few years, but I really don't start meeting with individual students um, until junior year, unless you wanna come meet with me and then you're welcome to any time. But the message I really want to get out there is that there are many options after high school and there's no one right option. So even though many students talk about going to college, that's just one of the nine options that I usually talk about for what you wanna do after high school. The important thing to do is to plan and to have a plan when you leave because the students that I hear from after they graduate that aren't happy are the ones who don't have a plan. And so how can you create a plan? You can take classes that interest you. You can be aware of what it takes to go to a two-year or four-year college or military or into a job and figure out what, what do I want to do that I'm going to be happy with. You can explore through ELOs. There are lots of things you can do so that when you graduate from high school, you are happy with the plan that you have and you can reach your goals. Before we conclude today, we are gonna ask you three questions to reflect on what you've learned today. The first question is, what have you learned from the presentation? The second question is, what are some classes that you feel are important for your educational and career goals? And lastly, what are some classes, both elective and core classes, that you are planning on taking next year? So we are going to end this online presentation and we're hoping that some of you will feel comfortable sharing these answers with the group or typing these answers in the chat. So we're going live.